soon as their time is done, you know, mambo yao kuisha and then we just now struggling to help raise somebody or like to help support somebody when alikuwa at the very top a few years ago earning lots of money and sasa maybe they are very i don't know they're in alcohol they get depressed and it's it, i ask this because i think we have seen a lot of athletes go through depression and not continue to you know extend their career beyond athletics but for you you have been able to do that and we see you know your journey still moving on and uh you're passing on your your talent and uh, your gifts to even the next generation which i hope will continue and continue so what advice or what can you say about such athletes yes uh good question uh very good question janet the most important thing is <laughs> being in a position always to reinvent yourself and uh, that's why you know i i keep on telling people please get education because when you get education you can ret- if something changes you retrain yourself i mean like you're in the us now whereby people lose their job correct and when they lose their job they go home they start thinking and some of them get retraining in another field they move on you know they they start retraining again and then they come back to job industry if that doesn't work after some time again they think like they can retrain let's say i want to retrain now as a teacher and i go and teach so i can be able to do that and what enables me to do that is the fact that i'm you know i have papers there yeah i have those papers and i have others correct So the biggest problem with athletes is athletics is a very fickle uh, profession because first of all some people can only sustain a few years of it and then out. So you retire when you are 23. You retire when you are 26 years old. You retire when you are 32, me let's say 32, all right? But you have no other skill Why would you retire? I mean like you retire when you are 32 and you live the next 50 years without a job without receiving your income coming in. Possibly even if you had made money you're going to run out. It's almost like these people who people who win lottery and then all of a sudden supposedly there is a problem, you know? The biggest problem is of course this issue athletics is that they there is nothing else that they are prepared for after the career just ends like that and uh, in in athletics there are very few people who can actually plan when they retire they a ninja comes quickly and then that's it the the event becomes so competitive there is and then the 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 other competitors push you out you are not relevant anymore things like that happen and the 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 the, the, the games moves on is the entertainment industry is almost like these movies you know like all of a sudden you find somebody who was a, a big star in the movie industry is uh, pushed out by the young coming actors people want to see the face whatever it is they want that to be the one which they are looking for or at this one is gone so the biggest problem with athletes is, is is that they are not trained to move on and they are not prepared and now in kenya mostly a lot of them need education to be able to reinvent themselves and move into something else be able to move i think now we are very few uh, you know people who are former athletes now, you know that are in sports uh, one is barnaba uh, korir who is actually very much into, involved in uh, young people athletics with athletic kenya Patrick Sang who is now actually now working with the young people I think uh, Lyudo Kipchoge and uh, Faith and plus many others myself Paul so um, huh? uh uh Usain Ibrahim Usain Usain yes and Paul Tergat and Paul the now Tergat but they're very we are few how many athletes are there in Kenya that are very successful 
We are so many. Hmm? We are so many. So the, the, we, we, we need at least, let people at least to start with, get some education, you know? Hussein went to St. Patrick's and then the US. Patrick was uh, in Texas, uh, University of Texas and then Iowa, you know? So th that's how this world goes. So. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And I, I, I just wanted to echo the same because I think when I was talking to Balozi, Akaniambia, the guy you were competing with in 1989, Seb Koi, is now the IAAF chairman or executive? President. And president. president of I yeah. Exactly. So look at the progression of such people's career. And I, I just want to challenge athletes out there. Why can't you be the SEBCO or do what Paul is doing, like an international coach? Or it your career basically does not have to end. And it's about reinventing yourself every time, even in any career. Um, yeah. And Janet, I want to add something very important, really, really important, okay? Yes. One of the biggest problems is, uh, again, lack of support, okay? Sebastian Co ended up being the president of IAAF because there was a support behind from his own country, okay? Kenya, we need to support young people who, are, who have this quest of reaching far, to go far. Don't block them. Give them a chance to be able to get into the business, get them be part of it, okay? Me, I think... Possibly, I think Patrick Sang would be a member of the IAAF or IOC. You know, you need to be there. But the way our system is, what you know, is the way this how you get into it is you have to start from home. Lazima wanasema waimbaji utunzo ama wachasaji utunzo nyumbani. So we need to tunzo wachasaji wetu wale wafike wapi uko inje pia. Because you cannot come in as an individual into IAAF or IOC. You have to come from grassroots, and the grassroots is the home, your federation. We should be able to enable people, not one person being in the helm until they, are, they kick the bucket. Thank you, thank you, Paul. I'm going to echo the same to um, Athletic Kenya, the federation. You, you need to, you know, mentor and be able to recruit you know we have some of the scholars who, who've done well and they can be able to do a good job i think or say i don't know you know kabla to jakuja on our takeaway so do you still have a question or yeah yeah i still have around two questions uh, one question uh, paul it's an opportunity because most of the leaders are following us probably the governors if you see this even in counties whereby we think uh, it's a, a, a local uh, government and in Afikia Watu, if you find even the selection of someone, when you are a minister of sports, so Kiambiwa, we go to the minister of sports, he doesn't have an idea of what is sports, soccer to up. So what, what, what's your message, so we to Atawalo Agirao Nangalao. If this is uh, athletics, we have to let a lot of, in Gia Kenya, Chulikani is about sports. Ato, maybe, as we say, it's a specific county, but one of the two are So, what's your message? Uh, kwa probably our governors and maybe one of the or at some stage, issue it our fikir. Another thing, uh, Paul, in comparison, when I just see to not remember if and uh, to not compare at uh, the power of uh, com in technology in China, China, uh, Juzi, uh, in Iluwa, in Asia, on a pattern like in our country, Kenya. Most of uh, wali, the number of uh, coaches in the underground who go to Japan when you want to almost the same. And in Jikama, China, while you want almost 12 coaches, now wali let a lot of medals. In the we go up in and because uh, we are here, we are learning by tonight. It's an opportunity we are hearing from someone like you when he knows more. And what can we do? Can I issue here to support you? Can I issue your mental health? I'm to maybe I'm a train for more, for more than 10 years that I qualify you in the career. That it might be at some stage when I was a part of athletes when I was a cause issues of mental health. And what can we do so that we prevent early before we pick up? Yes, uh, a very good question. I'll say I, I uh, yeah, I, 
that's one question that actually was waiting for you to ask and uh, you brought it up okay you brought a very good uh, very very important question the issue let me go back a little bit uh, before i talk about the counties the issue of mental health in athletes is big time yeah it, it destroys a lot of them and as you said somebody puts everything and they have faith they do it and then somebody comes and puts a huddle in front of you, a wall, and that's it, okay? And you, 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 do you really believe that person goes back and they will be normal again? There's no way. It's gonna be very, very difficult for them, especially the young one, especially the young person. It, it really, they, what goes through their mind, you don't know. I remember there was a time when I, I, I was reading in the news where Ash Bell, who was a, a known athlete, was almost actually going really crazy until I think the commissioner of police had to say, we need to talk to him, we need to bring him and, and, and consult, speak with him, you know? He has to relax, he has to check what has happened with understanding how things work, okay? Somebody had to come in and, and, and console him and talk to him and counsel him. So the issue of mental health is one aspect that has, or one issue that has been ignored that everything is gonna be okay, everything is gonna be okay but I don't think so. We have destroyed a lot of people and they die quietly with, with that pain, with that, that, that issue. And we never, nobody correct, nobody cares. It is there. Now, uh, I'd like to commend some governors that I've met, uh, I've met and talked to because they have assisted, they assist their, their young athletes. Can you, County, Mr. Tolgos is a proponent and Mr. Bandako from Washington. They are proponent of uh, athletes going to study. And this is my message to, to all the governors who feel like they need their young people to pursue athletic careers in education, is that always, okay, create human capital and you can only create human capital through education. And the, in a county that has got that human capital that is their, their population is educated is the county that is always gonna find a solution to a problem and move forward. And by the way, Central was, you know, one of the concentrated area where that human capital because Nairobi of course was the headquarters of the country of colonialism when they came in and people got education in the central before the rest of Kenya things went out and that's why central is doing well by the way they are doing well and when you look we have more land maybe than central but they are still doing well than us human capital give them education and I think you know, those people, Mandago is doing that because whenever I've got, a, you know, a kid coming to the U.S. and there are challenges, I, they have this challenge. I call them and I say, uh, Mr. Mandago, uh, this kid has got a scholarship, but they have this and this problem and that. What, what say, I'll take care of it. And the same thing with Tolgos. Those are the people, they don't know me. I mean, you know, but I, they get to understand what, where I'm coming from but the rest of the people can also follow if they know. I think maybe they have not got the message, but I think they can do that. Thank you, thank you, Paul, and thank you, uh, Governor Mandako and uh, Tolgos for being able to do that. Um, you know, they've been able to help you whenever we, you do something. I was talking to someone, Paul, the other day, and I found out that there is a young fellow in Mombasa he was in medical school. He stopped to continue because So I don't know, but that is a story of another day. So Kabla to Jakuja for take away. I have another question, uh, Paul. Um, and uh, you know, you and me being athletes in Kenya for many years. I represented Kenya 15 years internationally. I'm sure the same years as you, you know, 15 years representing your country, the country we love so much. Paul, we've been hearing a lot of uh, issues here, Manene attracts. I don't know, we never had, during our time, 
I don't know where this thing came from mpaka sasa huko nyumbani kuna hii story mingi unasikia wa athletes wamebaniwa bla bla all that what message do you have for our athletes and you know counties or even federation what do you have to say about the drugs you know doping na drugs paul you know everything that glitters is not gold and uh, a lot of young people uh given a quick way out they would like to they would like to cut that to take that quick way out or that shortcut okay my advice to young people is this those athletes they are very talented they will achieve the same same results they will break the world records they will do everything without taking even a vitamin Kenya food is organic. It's got all the vitamins, it's got all the minerals. If you get a good diet in Kenya, you will just perform like anybody. So drugs is not anything that you need. But young people are doing this because they think that that's really, they're being told, if you do this, this is what's going to happen. Some of them even are performing. They don't know whether it was a drug that helped them or it's just their natural talent. Let me tell you guys a story. Way back, when I first uh, became the Olympic champion, I came back to school the following winter, and I got a very bad cold, okay? I got a very bad cold that was in my chest, and I was coughing and coughing, and a friend of mine came and said, you, do you take vitamins? I said, no, I've never, what vitamins? He said, there is a vitamin called C. If you take vitamin C, it will protect you from getting a cold. So I said, where do I get this vitamin C? He said, well, you can get it anywhere in a drugstore. Drugstore is this uh, pharmacist. So I said, okay. So <laughs> I told him, let's, let's go and get, get me vitamin C. So I got vitamin C in February, 1989. I started taking vitamin for the first time. I'd never taken vitamin in my life. So I, I started taking vitamin C. Now, in March, I go to Europe, but I took vitamin C until that... Uh, that cold, the, the cough is gone, all right? <laughs> and I go to, in March, March 1st, I go to Hungary. I ran the world record, my friend. I set the world record. After I set the world record, I was, uh, there are people waiting for you when you finish the race and you said something like that, or you win the Olympic uh, gold medal in the world championship. They get you immediately for testing. And they ask me, have you taken anything? And I, re I, I, I thought about it and I said, did I take anything? And I said, I think I took vitamin C. So I went there and I told the lady, I said, have you taken anything lately? I said, yeah. What? Vitamin C. How much did you, when did you take it? I took it like uh, two weeks ago. I was taking vitamin C. And the lady looked at me and started laughing and she just smiled and kept quiet. <laughs> I didn't understand what that, to me, I felt like maybe, maybe I don't know this thing. I mean, I never broke a world record before. I took this thing and I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm tearing the wall down. So maybe, could it have helped me? Could it have been? So I, I won't. And I said, you know, I took vitamin C. But when you look at it, vitamin D doesn't help you. You get vitamin C and a lot of other stuff, you know, when you're eating well and all that stuff. So there is no reason for you to take drugs to be able to compete. You will always win even the way you are. As long as you take care of your body, you sleep well, you eat well, and you train properly. Thank you, thank you, Paul. Uh, and for athletes who are following us, ukikula chakula ya nyumbani, organic, chakula yetu nyingi ni organic, iyo yenye unakula kutoka huko kwa shamba, is sawa. So there is no point. And even I also reiterate the same and uh, echo what Paul has said. Uh, Kenyan athletes, you don't need uh, drugs. You don't need doping. You can do uh, very, very well the way you are. Just train hard, concentrate, and do what Paul has said, and all will be well. So to Narudi, um, I think unless Janet has another question, we are going to come to our takeaways. Alafu, uh, we are almost there. So unless Janet, unless Osea, uh, Janet doesn't have anything, so we will yeah. come back to our takeaways. 
maybe maybe because uh, Paul is, oh, maybe maybe because Paul is here there is an incident uh, probably two weeks ago we, we had a race here in Adelaide the Australian borders are closed and then I think somewhere smart somewhere when and um, just the get some athlete na kuambia kuna race ni mawa organize here in Adelaide South Australia nikikuja website ya hapa South Australia race iko lakini it is locally it is not international race and someone is preparing in Eldoret ametafutiwa ticket ametafutiwa kila kitu anajiandaa kuja race and inaendelea kwa Australia na already amelipa pesa huko ya mtu mwenye alikuwa anamorganize a race na race inaendelea huko so what is your message inside people in your, probably wako internet wanatafuta race kila mahali wanapata athlete mtu mwenye ako desperate mtu ananinia atapata any opportunity anaambia kitu kidogo ni kuundia race mtu kufika airport anaambiwa hata in, hata basic things Visa ya Australia kila kitu akaambia unaenda kupata from the airport stamp the airport so it so, is an incident i witnessed last week nilipigiwa uh, simu and and uh, kuongezea hiyo poll nafikiria hiyo ni maneno ya wakora there are so many con men out there uh, this guy Joshua alikuwa amesema kuna also some athletes ambao wanaenda kufika huko nje wanakwama you know some agents wanachukua hawa wanaambia we we'll organize races and then kufika huko this gentleman called uh, Joshua amekuwa huko Asia wengine wamekwama huko mpaka wana, wanaanza kuchangiwa tena warudi nyumbani what do you tell such athletes kabla ujaenda what do you need to know you know pe- people want to go there are a lot of cases even in uh, Saudi Arabia wengine wanaenda wanataka wakuwe mate kufika huko they suffer so uh, utaongezea hiyo poll alafu ndio turudi kwa take away Yes. So Athletic Kenya imejaribu kufanya education, imejaribu ku educate the athletes to understand how these international races work. That's number one. Number two, when you want to go out supposedly, uh, you have to clear with Athletic Kenya that you are going out because of this race. Number three, Athletic Kenya managers wako wala managers sanctioned. Okay? Waje kudanganywa alafu waje unaanza kukata kona. It's the same thing. This is the problem that is causing people even to take drugs because you are not listening to what you are being told please follow the stipulation ufanye hiyo masharti unaambiwa usifuata manager ambayo is a sanctioned manager because your manager if something happens to you athletic kenya will hold them responsible the person ambaye anakuja underground nobody knows who that person is na wewe utakuwa stuck outside there so please you know you follow to a couple of things one education in kenya in athletic kenya inajaribu siku siku educate young people wanakuwa na hii seminars wanaenda Eldoret wanaita athletes wakuja wote wanaambiwa kujeni hapa wanaeleza wa vitu ambavyo ile vitu they should and shouldn't do and one of the things is like muda wetu tukuleta kwa sababu kama something happens to you who took you there sasa wewe unaanza kulia you start crying unaanza kupatia watu burden kuanza kukuchangia kukutoa sio Asia na wewe kama ulikuwa umeuliza mtu wa athletic Kenya ambaye anajua hiyo watu angesema because athletic Kenya kwanza iko na calendar all the races wanajua So kama wewe unaenda your race athletic Kenya would not refuse you to just go and compete lakini ume organize your kitu properly under the right right channel uko na visa uko na insurance If something happens you your insurance it, it uh, take care of it na the manager is somebody ambaye anajulikana sio mkora so follow those things follow your majority na uliza kwa athletic Kenya watakusaidia Asante Paul uh, for those who are following and who had asked questions kama hiyo kuna kitu inaitwa insurance make sure you have insurance make sure you have the right agent usikimbilie tu kila mtu mtu anakuja hapo anakuambia i know races uh, athletic kenya wanapatuanga calendar ya all races yenye iko dunia mzima so they know that hii zingine yenye unatafuta kando kando utaenda huko utakwama uta, itakuwa shida and now una insurance make sure you have insurance and know where you are going who is your agent who is sending you there Thank you so much kwa wale mmetufuata so tunarudi for our takeaways and of course to answer uh, with the lady first alafu tukuje osea and then myself alafu ndio tupatie Paul atupatie his last words so Janet I don't know with all, with all this following the journey of Paul Rang to mefuata you know a great athlete great scholar great coach 
you know, alikuwa athlete, amekuwa coach. So hizo viti yote hii, you know, whoever is following us. Saa zingine kutunatumia uongo ndio ukuje huko. Make sure saa zingine it is very difficult utanganye Paul kwa sababu alikimbia. Ukiambia times and you know, he is able to do that. And not only that, Paul mwenyewe anakuja mpaka anakuona huko nyumbani. So utakata kona useme oh you know I was I wasn't able to come on akata kona vitu kama hizo. Be truthful in what you do, be disciplined, work hard and everything will be possible. Janet, you are take away what what did you take away from this? Uh thank you Balozi and I just want to thank uh Paul so much for spending a good two hours plus with us and uh, sharing all this knowledge and experience from you know his vast 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 experience uh, as an athlete and also now as a coach um i was listening and um, it's just very evident that paul is very focused from the very word go uh, i one big takeaway was paul king when he was uh, in primary school he used to read all the books and i'm sure you can see his knowledge transcends even up to date whatever he is doing and so i just want to encourage everyone uh, who's listening and if you have any young kids encourage them to read encourage them to read all the books and got uh, story books even story books hizo zenye zinakwanga kwa library those broaden the thinking and the perspective of children I'm very passionate about young children and I just opening the world for them let us not limit their potential because that is where uh, dreams are built and that's where um, we build uh, great people uh, and we build great character and Paul uh, mentioned one thing that he remembered from his dad he says always look up and i believe he has lived it from when he was in standard 1 so i say that for adults as is uh, young adults the youth and also for anyone who's still looking for a career who's still looking to live god has my god has blessed us we can live even up to 100 80 100 you still have a long way if you're at 50 and you can reinvent yourself so always look up but also remember don't uh, whatever you tell that young kid it's very important that young mtoto mwenye ako standard 1 standard 2 standard 3 make sure it's a positive word that because they will always remember uh, and like paul said always look up so always look up so paul i am just very uh, I don't know. And impressed I am very humbled by your achievements and how far you've been able to do and what you're doing even to pass on your knowledge, your experience to everyone else um even from back home seeing from your current athletes performing very well in the at the Olympics level so discipline is what kemwa uh, is what you said <laughs> very fondly and one big thing that i think i took away discipline 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 and be a self i know all these things or maybe the situations in kenya force us to be a self starter but it's all about your discipline and it's all about finding opportunities if you really want something go for it and you will be successful so thank you so much paul for sharing you've shared so much you've inspired a lot of us and i hope uh from all the information that we've learned from him is an international coach as well um has been useful or has inspired somebody or you've learned something so thank you so much paul for spending time with us and thank you jose and balozi for always being amazing co-hosts uh along with me thank you Thank you Janet we will go straight to Australia what have you taken uh, or say umechukua nini kutoka Paul Asante asante sana Valosi asante pia engineer na mgeni wetu nimechukua mambo kadhaa ya kwanza uh, Paul is a, as an package yourself ukiwa mkimbiaji package yourself thing i had unajua kukimbia 
is on uh, as I can after some time. So what will you do next? Yeah, and that is applicable to most of our life. Let's think ahead and package yourself. And one of the fundamental factors in Imekoja to do Paul is education. So what uh, Paul is doing and our fellow people in Yona to Fuata, don't let us don't underrate the education. Penye Paul and Mefika. So uh, kuna hiyo plan P. Alikuwa na kimbia P. Na kuna hiyo education. And he's doing amazing work. Akiwa coach at a, that a different level. Another thing is, uh, yeah, it's not about uh, it's not about a background. It's about a destiny. If you are focused and you know what do you want to achieve, uh, despite the humble background in Paul and Metoka, um, where's uh, a na maisha yake and Another aspect is 80% of in life. You have a support system, you have everything, you have a and like if you don't want to do it, nobody will do it for you. You know, as a quite village, you need to go to US or Nataka Australia, and you don't want to do anything. So start from in individual basis is what I have uh, bring for Metifunza from Paul. Another thing, um, I can use analogy of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ was teaching the difficult situation, Pia Luliza wanafunzi wake can apply in ama kipofu and as a ongoza kipofu. And the question was, if you figure situation in life, uh, in every aspect, in a polar meleta, it summarized uh, according to me, is like if you figure situation, for instance, maybe the Federation Kenya when I was listening at the same question, what can we do so that we improve? Our, our athletes and our athletes peer when our Lisa Hugo, what can we do so that we can be better? So that's an example whereby a situation where by applied and Angosa applied. So as a leaders, we have to be the one giving direction. We are the one giving solution. We are the one to solving our problem. What is facing our country? If you have an opportunity or a chance, please, to a solution. We see we want to listen to find any need to find any need. That's what we made the funds from Paul tonight. As I understand, Paul, you are highly welcome. You are now part of a family. You get an edge to a challenge. Now, when I'm to have a curious question, I look at our Lisa Paul and I talk about people can be sane. When I hear that we are now association in the ground, maybe we are to have a maybe an attack. We say we are not going to look at it. Girao, asande, 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 kakiko valosi. Pole, pole, asande, 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 osea, asante, Janet, for your time. Uh, Paul, what I've taken uh, from you is to look up, I want to share with parents. Muzazi, when you are talking to your kids, talk to them positively and uh, mean what you say to them because they will not forget. Unakumbuka sasa ya Paul and atuambia at class one. So class one, you know, you only about when you are about, what, seven years, uh, something like that. But he remembers start from the father, looking up. And uh, thank you, Paul, for always looking up. And you are still looking up for great things ahead of you. Paul also has told us that to, before you do something, do research. Fanya research yako, usifanya tu kitu kwa sababu ni lazima ufanya. Fanya a little bit of investigation so that, you know, you know where you are going. He, he spent a lot of time in the library as a young person, na kakasana. And then more importantly, Paul ametuambia discipline, 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 plus hard work. Ukifanya hiyo, the rest will follow. So what is more important that I took away from Paul is ukienda kwa Paul as an athlete. He doesn't just want to see you uh, be there as an athlete. He wants to, you to succeed. So he wants his athletes to succeed. So when you go to UTEP, Paul, at a make sure, you know, who may succeed, you become family to him. Continue doing well, pa uh, Paul. We wish you the very best. We always would encourage our athletes, don't be scared when they, uh, we, we don't want to be con, uh, consigned or to, 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 to back it to Konyumban. If you can be able to go to another country and represent them, well and good. We always know that what we, Wataru de Nyumbani, regardless of where they go. So it is a good thing. Wahende Uko, Kama Madaktari, 
wanakubaliwa waende Britain why not athletes uh, Brazil Argentina Mexico the great uh, soccer players from all over the world we see them in uh, clubs in Europe why can't our athletes go and represent other places as well so we will always talk about that but Paul we wish you the very best in life as you continue we also know that you've been one of the best coaches in NCAA. You've been voted as one of the best coaches in NCAA for some years. Keep up the banner and continue representing us. Uh, personally, I'm very proud of you, Paul, um, for what you've done for sports and what you will continue to do. Thank you so much and be blessed. Paul, tutarude kwako ndi utu kupatia nafas, utuambie your last words for our followers. Thank you, our followers who followed us. Asante Nisana. Um, we hope you've uh, learned something from Paul like we have. Uh, we, we hope you've been inspired like we've been inspired. And uh, we will continue uh, looking for our people from wherever they are. We found our guest today uh, from Texas, El Paso. Uh, you can research and see Texas, uh, El Paso, what is there. And if you are interested as an athlete and want to go to UTEP, you want to succeed and be an Olympic champion, it is possible with the rank because we have Emmanuel Correr who went to Texas, El Paso, took his chance, and he became an Olympic champion like Paul. For your information, uh, uh, Osea and even uh, Janet and all of us, it is usually said that chances of meeting an Olympic champion is one in three million people. So to be able to meet two is something very special. So that is the information. It takes three million people to meet one Olympic champion. We have two in this program. So this is how special it is. Paul, we are giving you a chance to give us your last words. Uh, whatever you want to say, talk to the young uh, athletes. Uh, parents who are following us, anybody who is listening and has followed us, Paul, it's your turn. Yeah. Uh, let me just uh, start by thank you, thanking you, Peter, for bringing me into the program. Jose and Janet, uh, this is uh, it's been a great uh, uh, two hours of uh, talking. Uh, I wish, I wish this program was actually was able to get to young people. Uh, young people are the people who can make change in life. When you are young, you are passionate. You push. You want to do something. You want to get. You want to become successful. And when you are young, that's the time when things, the ideas are formed. In my life, and maybe this is something I'm going to tell, maybe whoever listening to this program. In my life, there are three institutions that I was very, very uh, respectful of. I respected them so much. I respected the family institution. I respected family, family. I respected family a lot. Because when you belong to a family, something happens and they say, whose child is that? Whose child is that? That's not like so and so. That cannot be so and so family. How come? You know, they, that, that's they, so I respected the family institution a lot. I respect that family institution. And family fabric is very important in human uh, existence. And I fear the family. So I respect them with fear at the same time. I respect the church. I respect the church institution because we learn how to live proper life. That's what the church teaches. And I'm talking about the conventional church. There are so many churches nowadays with a different outlook in life. By the way, I did study religion in college. I have a degree in religion studies. 
and I study religion, understand religion. Buddhism, Islam, Christianity, traditional religion, I know all those things. I respect that institution of religion. And when you look at our culture, we have cultures where we do things. Actually, those are religious things before the white man brought us their Christianity. We had our way of doing things of appeasing God and our, our, our deities. I respect teachers, I respect school, education institution. I respect those who, those people who nurture a young person to think in a certain way. I respect that institution of education. Way back when I went to Kenya, I, I, I was actually surprised and I started asking myself, this is a self-exploratory question that I was asking myself in my head. Because they said, all of a sudden I found out, oh, there is something called corruption in Kenya. <laughs> it's a word that is actually every, you know, you ask this, they say, oh, because of corruption. You ask this, oh, because of corruption. You ask this, it's because of corruption. And I asked myself, where did we go wrong? What failed? Did the family institution crumble and fail? Was this the church that has failed us? Is it the school system that is failing us? Because those three institutions is the society that we create, correct? That's what makes us a society, a community. So for the young people, if you are listening, respect your parents, respect your teachers, Hear the good word of God and listen to the church. And figure out, you know, with the guidance of your parents and your teachers and the church, you will always go somewhere. When we started this program, I, I talked about how I got to Starehe and I had to get recommendation from the priest, from the chief, from the headmaster. You know, and those are the institutions that actually that I felt. And, and I'm in touch with those people who are very lo long time ago in my life. I'm still in touch with them, but I think they made me who I am. Forget about what you see in social media. Eh? That's a facade for the young people who are like, nowadays we are more into media. It's social media, you don't go out there. Get out, forget about the social media. Listen to your parents and your teachers and read more books and, 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 and uh, you know, listen to go to church, be singing the choir. And your life would be okay. There's no problem. You will be okay. It will come out good. So thank you. Thank you, Paul. We wish you the very best in life and in everything. We will bring you whenever we will need you in one of our programs for sometimes if we have to uh, benchmark things because people ask us questions about scholarships and all those things, we will always refer to you. Uh, a lot of changes usually do happen with the NCAA and things like that. Every single day, we will always uh, refer to you. A lot of people, Paul, usually ask me about the scholarship, although I got one, there are a lot of changes and you are the one. So I always ask you, before we do this, a lot of people just go and uh, want to pick a mustuni. So uh, there is no point to pick a mustuni uliza uta 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 saidiwa. We will always have the answers from the right people. Uh, to memaliza a program yaleo asante sana Janet asante sana Osea, asante sana our guest Paul uh, Paul Paul Loren. We wish you the very best and uh, have a wonderful wonderful week. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.